Hello everyone and welcome back if you are a returning student or welcome for the first time if you're here for the first time to our five minute Bible study series. We're trying to go through every chapter of the Bible, one study a day, roughly when I don't take breaks. Uh, and we're, the goal is to go all the way through the, well, all the way through the entire Bible, which I believe is 1,189 chapters. We've made some good progress so far. We've learned a lot about the Bible, especially the first 10 or so books. Today, we start the book of 2 Chronicles. 1 Kings is to 1 Chronicles what 2 Kings is to 2 Chronicles. If you were just with us as we finished up the book of 2 Kings, now we're going to 2 Chronicles. We're actually going to go back in time quite a few years, several hundred years, and Second Chronicles is going to give us another account of the kings, beginning with King Solomon building the temple. I know some of you are like, no, please, no more kings, but <laughs> we have to cover this second account now in Second Chronicles. So yes, uh, a few more kings. During the days of the first three kings of Israel, Saul, David, and now Solomon, the kingdom of Israel and Judah, they were united under one king. But we're going to see them dividing in 2 Chronicles, and we're going to get the history of Israel, which is the northern kingdom, and Judah, which is the southern kingdom. We're going to talk about whether or not they keep their word to be faithful to God, and if they don't, what happens to them? Spoiler alert, they're not very good at keeping their word, and so they're going to have to face some consequences. The book of 2 Chronicles covers several centuries, the history of Israel and Judah, so we're covering quite a bit of time in this book. That's in contrast to some other books that may only cover one generation of time, or maybe even a few years. If you are new here, you may not know that we make a PDF outline of all the information that we cover every day. That PDF is available for download for free on our website at tobelikechrist.com. There's always a link in the description that will take you to the website so you can get the new outline. They're always posted, well, if I do my job, but they're always posted the, the day that the video comes out. And we always try to answer some basic questions. When did the events happen? Who are the key individuals or key characters in the chapter? Where did the events happen geographically? And where are the significant cities or, or locations on our map that we use? Then we go over onto our second page. We talk about the outline. We try to break the chapter down into easy to understand sections and just make it easier to comprehend for the everyday reader. Then finally, we have an application section. What can we take away from this chapter? What does God want us to take away from this to draw us closer to him? So with that, let's go ahead and get into Second Chronicles. As I mentioned, we're starting off with Solomon. Our when section, when did these events happen on the timeline of Bible and secular history? Second Chronicles 1 discusses events that took place in the early reign of King Solomon. He ruled in Israel for 40 years from approximately 1015 BC to 975 BC. This is about a thousand years before Jesus. So the beginning of his reign was around 1015 BC based on the timeline that we've been using. So we're right around in that area. Now let's talk about the key characters in this chapter. First we have David. He's mentioned briefly. David was the second king of the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah. So then when these two groups of people were still getting along and ruled under one king. Solomon is our main character in this chapter. He's the son of David and he's the third king of the United Kingdom of Israel and Judah. And he ruled over God's people in the promised land, the land that Moses and Joshua had led them into and now centuries later he's king over them. We should mention that Solomon is going to be the last king of the United Kingdom because the kingdom is going to divide when his son takes over. His son's name is Rehoboam, but we'll talk about him later. Now we must consult our map. Our main location for the first couple chapters in 2 Chronicles is going to be Jerusalem. This was the capital of the kingdom. This is where Solomon's palace was going to be built. The tabernacle, which if you remember, that was a tent that was constructed by Moses and the Israelites during their wanderings in the wilderness, and it held the special holy items like the Ark of the Covenant, the Altar of Incense, the Golden Lampstand, the Table of Showbread. The tabernacle had traveled with the Israelites as they made the Promised Land their home, and they pitched the tabernacle, the tent, at Gibeon, and Solomon is going to make a trip to Gibeon in this chapter. In fact, that's the very first thing that we're going to talk about in our outline section, verses 1 through 6, Solomon sacrifices in Gibeon. After King David, his father's death, Solomon took over as king, and God blessed his kingdom and his reign. 
Solomon visited the tabernacle, which was his holy special tent that Moses had built in the wilderness. Although the tabernacle was in Gibeon, the kind of central holy item, the Ark of the Covenant, it was no longer in Gibeon. Because if you have a really good memory, you'll remember that the Ark of the Covenant had been moved from Gibeon to Jerusalem by David. And David set up a tent there in Jerusalem. So the Ark of the Covenant was in Jerusalem, but the rest of the tabernacle, including the bronze altar where sacrifices were offered, that was in Gibeon. So Solomon goes to Gibeon, and there he offered a thousand offerings, a thousand burnt offerings or sacrifices to the Lord. You may have heard of Solomon before, and you may have heard that he was a very wise man. Well, how did he get all of that wisdom? We're going to find out in section number 2, verses 7 through 13. God gives a gift of wisdom to Solomon. When Solomon was at Gibeon, God appeared to him in a dream, saying, quote, What shall I give you? Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom to lead the nation, lead the people who had been entrusted to him. His request pleased God, and God granted him quote, wisdom and knowledge, and told him that no man on earth would be as wise as him. We know that from 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 12. The Lord was pleased that Solomon didn't ask for selfish things like money or power or long life. And since he didn't ask for those things, God promised to give him money and honor in addition to his wisdom. This chapter is rather short. It only has 17 verses. So verses 14 through 17 is going to be our last section. It just talks about some of Solomon's business dealings, Solomon's riches, and his, his importing and exporting business. And this is part of the way that Solomon became very rich. In Solomon's day, the text says, quote, silver and gold were as common in Jerusalem as stone. Solomon amassed 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen in Israel. Solomon was in the business of importing and exporting chariots and horses and no doubt making a profit on these. He bought these from the kings of Ku and Egypt, which is south of the Promised Land, and then he sold them at a profit to the kings of the Hittites and the Syrians. And so God is blessing Solomon's kingdom. The nation is becoming even more wealthy than it became under King David. We're going to see Solomon going up and up and up and up, at least for a while, as God is blessing him and making Israel into a, a very significant nation on the world stage during this time in history. Now, to really take advantage and to get the application for today's study, you have to go somewhere else in the Bible. God gives us an opportunity to actually learn from Solomon's heavenly wisdom. God saw fit to preserve Solomon's wisdom for future generations to benefit from, and you can read selections of his wisdom and his wise words in books like the book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes. Proverbs is a collection of wise sayings covering a broad range of topics. The book of Ecclesiastes is really interesting because it records Solomon's pursuit of meaning and purpose on the earth. And his pursuit ultimately ends with him concluding that God is the only one who can give true value in life. So take some time today maybe to find where those books are located. They're usually like right in the middle of your Bible, right after the book of the, the big book of Psalms. Uh, so find those books and if you have some time, read a chapter or two, familiarize yourself a little bit with some of Solomon's wise words.